directing actors is a really big course, and we've divided it into two major parts. Part one is very broadly the theory section, which is kind of a misnomer because it's all very practical. This part is more about individual techniques and creating full characters. Something bad? What are you fighting crime by night? Yeah, so you hit her with it. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're in volume one, which is about pinning down exactly what kind of phenomenon acting is and what makes it work. I hope that by the end of this volume, you'll be satisfied with my answer. Volumes two to eight are called active ideas, where we create a huge vocabulary of the psychological triggers that drive the acting performance. Acting is all about behavior, and what we're looking for is behavior that runs effortlessly by itself, as opposed to having to think about how to say each line and what to do when. Instead of, how could you do it? Can we go with, how could you do it? How could you do it? Yeah, I feel like there's something stronger there. Okay. All how right? could you do it? How could you do it? Active ideas are certain categories of thoughts that trigger behavior in you, where you flick a switch and your whole demeanor aligns around an idea. And I will never, ever go out with you. By directing from this level and consistently avoiding micromanagement, we get much more organic behavior. You already know some active ideas like objectives or obstacles or stuff like moment before a destination. But it's so, so much more. We're spending all of part one mapping out every active idea that exists. There is, in fact, a whole way to understand how every acting technique relates, and I think that this part will open your eyes whether you're an actor or a director. Part two is then part of a directing workflow from casting through rehearsal and shooting in super slow motion so we can analyze everything. Hello. Hey, Charlie. Hey, y'all. Uh... The casting section takes you through a whole casting process. This is about how to find out if somebody's right for the part, how to find out if they can really act, and what positive and negative signs to look for. Because we found a female body underneath it encased in concrete. We go into great detail about how you should run the audition and how you should direct during the audition. I think you need to, to try to figure out if she knows what you did. Okay, that, that helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and we go all the way to callbacks and test pairings to see if the actors have chemistry. So this section is obviously super important for directors, but I really wish for every actor to see it. Actors spend their lives getting rejected at auditions, and the internet is brimming with advice on what you're doing wrong. But you shouldn't listen to most of that advice, because trying to live up to a thousand contradictory goals cripples you in the audition room. All right, okay. it was great meeting you. you. Too. Great, thanks. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. What you really need is simply to be a fly on the wall and watch an unfiltered casting process from the director's perspective. This might change your whole outlook on auditioning. Next, we dig in with rehearsal techniques, which is something many people skip, thinking it'll make the characters more spontaneous. But not rehearsing makes the characters hollow and empty. You'll have no toolbox or common language on the set, and the acting won't be ready for prime time. <laughs> that's good. I like it. That's, that's a lot better. And mm -hmm. so basically, throughout all the time while he's saying that, you're just walling it out and preparing your next sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next volume is shooting techniques, where we work with the process on the set, still in ultra slow motion. We're interested in the whole conversation, what you say when, what you don't say when, how to motivate and how to criticize constructively. We're also interested in solving every problem that comes up, like nervous actors or pulling the scene back from a bad place. We want to use the shooting process itself to enhance the acting. And we want to shoot in ways that don't damage the acting. 
and then we're rehearsing and shooting for the last five volumes. This is where we turn on the storm and work at full speed using everything we've learned. This is the first time we can truly see how the techniques come together to create living, breathing characters. In this part, we're not pretending to be perfect. We both have real successes and real failures, including a scene that falls apart because I simply got it wrong. I'm keen on showing it honestly because it's important that you see that you can fail and recover. And that being a leader doesn't mean having every answer, just the important ones. We're covering lots of new ground in this part as things come up during the shoot. And the scenes are also chosen for their issues, for example, a love scene which requires special handling. Or emotional or physical violence, which you also need to know how to handle. So that's what you and me are doing for the next month. My ultimate goal with this whole project is for actors and directors to have a normal relationship, just working together to make characters. When you understand the enormity of the task of creating a character, you can only be humble and you become an instant collaborator. Actors and directors each bring something unique to that process and it only works when we do it together. Right now, that means holding our end of the bargain and becoming a lot more competent about acting. So let's get started.